Hello and welcome to the Metapod Podcast, the Pokemon podcast that revolves around the evolving meta and the evolving world. Right now it's going to be an ASMR stream because we're recording this at 11 p.m. at night, Pacific time at least, because Sean, you want to update the, uh, the viewers on what you're doing right now? Uh, I'm currently in Germany. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm in Germany and for whatever reason my camera decided not to work, so the viewers on YouTube will see a lovely icon, but... Yeah, um, I know Jake and I have been away for several weeks because between moving, bad internet, and now me traveling, it's just, it's crazy. But we couldn't, we couldn't skip this week because, Jake, we have Paradox Rift coming hot on the heels of the Sacramento Regionals. It has been an exciting weekend with reveals, with uh, latest results in terms of the Pokemon training Oh, sorry, Pokemon trading card game. So we wanted to get this out to you. I am all settled in in Vegas. I have fantastic, scrumptedly dumptious internet now. (laughs) And so we can finally get back to the podcast, kind of as it usually is. You know, it's it's just a lot of fun in this card game, Sean. But first, Sean, as always, we are going to do the five-star review. And since our last podcast, we've actually gotten a couple reviews lately there have been two of them that i really want to know one of them will do a little bit more but the other one i wanted to acknowledge because it was left on my birthday because we did the uh we did the episode on my birthday yeah that's true so there was a happy birthday message in there from octo so thank you so much uh octo as well i appreciate the late birthday announcement well you were on time because you left it on my birthday the thing i just didn't see it till right now so that's on me (laughs) but anyways there's another five star review on here the five star review from leroy yanda please bring back the five star review i've been playing this since (laughs) evolutions love the podcast keep it up well here's off to you the five star review is back and it (laughs) is you thank you so much for leaving it playing around uh the pokemon training card game since evolution sean were you yeah you weren't playing in evolutions were you no i was not playing in the evolutions era but i will say evolutions as a set was the pack that got me back into the pokemon trading card game because i was out i was just wandering around i was like you know i'm gonna open a pack for the first time in 20 plus years open up evolutions Pull the full art Mega Charizard, uh, and uh, you know the rest is history. You should have just retired there. You know, hundred <laughs> you know, percent win rate. I know, but uh, instead, uh, I decided to like fall for the gambler's fallacy and just you know believe that I could keep doing it over and over again. But you know, that's uh, you're you're smart about it. But yeah. Sean, <laughs> Sean, there were many players out in the Sacramento regionals that happened over this last weekend. And there was some exciting stuff in there, some smart pilots with plenty of decks. We're going to talk real quick about the deck distribution of day one, just to give you kind of an idea of how the meta was, Sean, because I know you were busy traveling. You probably didn't have a ton of time to watch it, right? I did watch the finals match yesterday, which, you know, a little anticlimactic. I'm not going to lie. I'm sure a lot of people probably felt the same way, but it was cool to see what was out there. Now, did you watch it after I told you that Gyarados VMAX? I did. So once I told you that, you were like, okay, I'm going to watch this finals match. But I will say, it's not like I would have known Gyarados VMAX was, you know, in the deck given how the match played out. That's true. (laughs) Anyways. It never came out. (laughs) We'll get into that in this. There were 1,400 trainers, and you may not think that 1,400 is a lot for the regionals, but for Sacramento West Coast, for those of you that have been following the Pokemon trading card game since before COVID-19 hit, West Coast regionals often did not have many players. Like, I think they were lucky to hit 1,000 players. So, Sean, 1,420 total trainers Tons of different decks out there. Uh, it was a big regional for Sacramento. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I know we didn't get to talk about Peoria either. Mm-hmm. We we actually recorded an episode that had some tech issues <laughs> and, and then internet issues, but I would say that um, it was interesting seeing the meta 
either shift or develop a little bit between the two. But Jake, mm-hmm. do you want to give us the quick breakdown of uh, what people were playing? So as uh, as the Lost episode would say, we did talk about how Lost Box Kyogre was on the rise and how I really liked the deck. Sean and I really liked the deck and the archetype, and a lot of people took notice of that as well. The most popular deck in Sacramento, Lost Box, uh, well, that includes all of the Charizard versions, the Kyogres, you know, just Turbo with um, just... Uh, just Dragonite and Raikou, but Lost Box in general, still very, very good and prevalent. Charizard EX was right behind it also at 14%. This is Charizard and Pidgeot. It says on the graphic, we don't know if it has Arceus on it or not, but we do know that Charizard still very, very popular. Even after uh, Curitiba, I think it's called, the la- mm. the um that regionals and then it dipped in peoria people still playing it right on 13 percent gardevoir 12 percent chin pal 11 percent and lugia v star rounding out the top five most popular decks at eight percent so sean this was a very even uh regional this was a very even event we don't get these too often nowadays no and i'm a little surprised um that Mew VMAX seems to be still falling off in terms of popularity. Um, just because it, you know, at Peoria, it did really well. I can't remember if it won or not. Um, I might, have, might have gotten second or something, but, um, but yeah, Mew VMAX continues to be incredibly consistent. And if you were to watch the finals match in Sacramento, the one thing that you wouldn't be able to say is uh, about both of these decks is consistency despite you know the players i'm sure have built great decks but i don't think anything is quite as consistent as mew and um I, i'm a little surprised that there's not as much mew but you know that and Gardev- gardevoir maridon i feel like those three decks mew gardevoir and maridon all insanely yep. consistent you could even probably put lost box in that conversation as well so it was very interesting to see all of these decks come about in the event but the winning deck that we have right here and i'm actually covering up some of the screen so apologies to all of our viewers but what won the deck was lugia v star lugia v star piloted by alexander flatos this is what we assume is the entire deck we don't actually have the um total deck right here but this is a pretty good guess just watching the fod it's probably you know 58 59 cards correct in this sean since you can't actually see it this has lugia v star and archaeops as always professor burnett research jet energy double turbo but there are a couple other conclusions in here as well the snorlax unfaced fat with thumping snore there were three of them in this deck sean three of them is not something that we usually see but with that unfaced fat remember blocking off things like sableye greninja stuff like that yep. um snorlax boded well in the lost box matchups yeah i i think it was a good choice because you know to your point lost box was the most popular deck choice mm-hmm. so what is the best card uh, in terms of attacker against Lost Box, well, it's Snorlax because you can't put 12 damage counters on it. Um, and you have Therapeutic Energy, which mm-hmm. stops it from going to sleep between turns. It's kind of the perfect, you know, attacker in the matchup uh, against probably most or if not any Lost Box version. Um, yeah. And, and Jake, what there was one other attacker that I noticed that ended up taking everything home for uh, our winner. Um, and I believe that was Weird Ear V. Weird Ear V, it won the Seniors World Championship um, this past year. And Weird Ear V on there with the Psychic Break, I think it's called the attack, has the ability mm-hmm. moving from the bench to the active. You can put as much energy as you want from your Pokemon onto the Weird Deer. So being able to just build up a ton of damage to swing when things aren't one-shotting you, things are doing like two-shot damage um, and just collecting damage everywhere. You can just spread that damage apart, you know, putting in different attackers and just have Weirdier come home clean. 
Yeah. I I really like the weirder in the um in the deck because it is you need a cleanup attacker if you've got Charizards at 330 HP or you know it didn't come up in the matchup but Gyarados Vmax also mm-hmm. is really beefy um it, so having a an attacker in a Lugia deck that can just sort of come in late game close everything out um which is exactly what happened uh it's kind of you know, you couldn't ask for a better Pokemon. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was cool. It's cool to see. Going into then the second place deck, as Sean was alluding to, it was Gyarados VMAX. So this is Arceus B-Barrel, I think is more accurately called, playing a 4-3 line of Arceus V-Star, a 2-2 line of Bibberol, and only a 1-1 line of Gyarados and Gyarados VMAX along with a little slacking V. Well, not little with the 230 HP <laughs> heavy swinging 260. Is it 260 damage, I think, on slacking? Uh, it's either 250 or 260. Yeah, something huge. Um, and then the only drawback being, you know, the ability that's mm-hmm. like you can only attack if your opponent has... Or if you, I don't know, can't remember which one, but if somebody has two, four, or six prizes, um, but, you know, you could turn that off with the Path to the Peaks that are in the deck. This deck is running four Path to the Peaks in there, and Gyarados VMAX, if you do not know, I think Hyper Beam is the first attack, um, doing a doing a good amount of damage off of three energy, I believe 100, man, it's so hard to see, I'm realizing how hard it is to see through this. Uh, Sean will be back soon, maybe. Oh man, it's not even zooming in. But, and then has a second attack for four energies, do, doing 240 damage. So, utilizing Melanie the in this attack, deck. Yeah. Yeah. Do, I, I mean, the second doing, attack is the main one. Doing the second attack is very, very good, especially with like choice, uh, choice belt, choice band. Um, and or defiance ban, yeah, that is included in this list as well. Um, can really start stacking up the damage on on uh, Gyarados V Max. Uh, I'm going to point out one other card that I don't know how many copies are in the list, so Jake, mm-hmm. you can let me know. But Sharon's Care um, is, you know, if you look at the format, you have Mew V Max, and it can reach and hit those 280 numbers. Um, and then you know, obviously, Weird Ear is very specific and situational but outside of like I'm, I'm thinking to the format right now there's not a lot of attackers that are doing that full 280 especially since giratina v star has sort of fallen off quite a bit oh yeah so yeah the fact that you can't get knocked out with one hit as the Arceus player i think it opens the gate to probably i think what is in my opinion one of the best um situational supporters in the game right now which is sharon's care which allows you to pick a damaged colorless pokemon uh and all cards attached put them into your hand um i was just thinking about this jake and i'm like i think this format right now is suffering from a bit of he or she or they who attack first uh Mm -hmm. typically win first um because you know if you look at all the matches probably and i'm sure people feel this the first person to get the attack off, the first person to start taking prizes, the prize trade is pretty even across the board. The only deck that skirts that is Lost Box. So how do you stop that pattern? Well, you allow somebody to hit into your Arceus, and then you share its care. So it's basically like they had one less attack than you. And that literally shifts the balance back into your favor in terms of the, the person who attacks the most wins. Sharon's Care, very, very good. Only a one of in this deck, but you are playing Palpad, so technically you can get two Sharon's Care in this. This list also playing Vengeful Punch. Uh, Vengeful Ooh. Punch, the item card. If your Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack, you put, uh, I think, four damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, able to get you a bunch of extra damage on the board. You know, Arceus hitting 200, often 180 or 210, uh, depending on the combination of tur- double turbo energy and uh, choice band. And then maybe with the Gyarados or the Slacking V, you know, maybe just missing the numbers a little bit, the Vengeful Punch can finish the job in terms of the uh, 
in terms of the defending Pokemon that you are attacking. So very, very cool list. Second place, I would not have expected Gyarados VMAX to get more points than Hisui and Zoroark, but here we are today. Melanie is a good card, but there's a couple other lists that I want to talk about, Sean. Their uh, Lost Box continued. We won't go over the list like a ton, mainly because there's a lot of the same with Lost Box, but especially with Lost Box in this top eight, there were several Lugias in the top eight, Lugia being the winning deck. So Lost Box Turbo, Kyogre ran the show, it ran rampant in you know, turbo based decks like the one that we're showing on screen right now with the traditional Dragonite and Raikou. It also ran in the Zamazenta builds that like Azul Garcia Griego and his gang were playing in the event with Metal Energies as well. And I personally feel like that the Raikou ended up being the best option. Um, specifically for that lightning weakness, you can just really sway. You don't have to worry about you know, multi-hitting a Lugia. You can use that Raikou to really clean up stuff in that matchup and not have to worry about something like Snorlax as much or, or things like that. So Raikou being very, very good. There's not too much different in the Lost Box uh, list that we're showing on screen right now. I'm sure if I told Sean to make a, like a Lost Box Turbo Kyogre list, he'd probably be like 58 cards correct <laughs> you know because we've yeah. talked about lost box so much but i do think that including raiko in your decks is probably i mean it was the best call for the event i don't know if it's the best version of it but at least for sacramento it was the best call so that was pretty much sacramento regionals there was guard of war in top eight as well um, some Lost Box in there, Lugia, Arceus, Gyarados. So it had a little bit of variety in there, but really, especially with the Lugia being the fifth best deck, or I'm sorry, the fifth most popular deck, Sacramento Regionals, it was very curious to see it do so well, you know, in terms of the conversion rate and things like that. Um, just doing really, really well, Sean. Jake. Are you ready now for Paradox Rift, though? I am ready for Paradox Rift. So it wouldn't be a Metapod episode if we didn't talk about the next set in some form or fashion. Actually, that happens a lot more than you think. We we talk about <laughs> sets when the the sets become translated and mostly revealed and things like that. But we're going to be talking about Paradox Rift. Paradox Rift is our November... I think officially the November set, but yeah. mm -hmm. the pre-releases are starting this weekend. Yes, so sign up for your pre-releases if you have not already. Maybe ask your local game stores when they're having them, but we're going to kind of go through these. There's some interesting cards in here, some cards that are making people panic, um, aka Jake Gearhart, but we'll talk about those <laughs> as they come. But Sean, do you want to take the card, the first card? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, thank you, shout out to Justin. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the site every time, but I'll start with the Frostlass EX. It's like right at the top, it's an EX. Um, yeah, it is a stage one uh, EX. It is a Terra type, so it's grass type Frostlass, but that uses uh, water energy. The ability Evanescent, <laughs> I just can't help but think of the singer. Um, if this Pokemon is in the active spot and it's knocked out, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent takes one fewer prize card. So, you know, you could have this two prize are up, and then, you know, if you get lucky on the coin flip, your opponent ends up only taking one prize. The question then becomes, what kind of damage can you deal out while taking that risk? Well, for two water, you have Frost Bullet. Uh, you do 140 damage and 20 to one of your opponents benched, which is, I don't really know. I haven't calculated all the math on, like, how much damage spread is necessary for the format or whatever, but it feels pretty underwhelming as an attack. And the fact that the ability can be turned off of the path to the peak. Um, but Jake, what do you think about this? I think this ability is very, very cool. I do agree though. It's, it's a little bit nerfed 
in itself. So if you think back to the Victini that was around probably, I don't remember exactly what set it was, but longtime players that listen to the podcast may remember. It was a Victini that let, that allowed you once per per turn i think it was to reflip mm -hmm. a coin or a or a, a proc for it so like if you had an, the the thing that i can think of is slow bro so the slow bro said you know you flip three coins do x amount of damage per heads but if you flip all three tails you lose the game so the victini would allow you to reflip all three coins um something like yeah. that and even uh what was a glimwood tangle um yeah. would be really really cool alongside this card if you could reflip it but i think of something like glimwood tangle where that was a stadium that was great in your turn but in your opponent's turn like you mentioned pat to the peak shutting off abilities and stuff that thing's not gonna work so hopefully you know maybe we can get a stage one like support pokemon with an ability that could help that out because that i mean i would just love for this card to be good i i love stuff like that yeah I'm, i like to look at this card and i'm just kind of like okay if you need to hit for grass weakness let's say charizard, charizard. Hard, but all of a sudden yeah let's say it takes off and it's the best thing and since sliced bread you know i you could see a world where you maybe run a water attack and this is a card in there so you can hit for both water and grass weakness if it matters um or you can use the Chen Pao plus. Well, Chino, I don't think you hit but... for water weakness. No, no, no. But you can hit for grass weakness while using water energy. So oh, like, got it. If you, if, yeah. So I don't know. It, there's maybe a world it when Path to the Peak rotates. Mm -hmm. Let's say that they don't reprint another thing that turns off abilities immediately, which you know is possible, right? Like it's very likely. I think Path to the Peak rotates in the next set, right? Uh, well, we don't officially know I mean, about know, rotation but... we can get a pretty good idea <laughs> but we don't exactly know what's going to rotate what's not going to rotate but i i mean pat to the peak's been around a while i think it's a pretty good assumption to think that it'll rotate yeah i think if my guess is right it's either block d or e whatever the most the oldest block is i think it's block d so, yeah so it, yeah the block that rotates next i think it's part of that and you know maybe there's a world in six months where this is an interesting deck but my guess is for now it's uh it's gonna be asleep you don't <laughs> uh knock out a charizard with a one hit ko so it's uh it's well, a little with a tough defiance band with a defiance okay, band you maybe <laughs> but it, that's just another card to get off the combo sean <laughs> it's sad because also 240 plus 20 like 280 plus 20 still also doesn't knock out so the 20 damage if you're doing 280, it's still not enough. So it's mm -hmm. like the math is just bad on this card. The Anyways. math <laughs> could be better, but we'll move on to the next ones. I will say there are two Toad School cards in this set, one by Komiya. Um, I love Toad School, great Pokemon. But I'll talk real quick about Toad Scruel, the evolution of my little guy, Toad School. So. I'm just going to talk about him for his ability because that's really all you need to know. I think it's interesting. Stage 120 HP grass type Pokemon with the ability Fungal Colony. Cards in your opponent's discard pile can't be put into their hand by an effect of your opponent's abilities or trainer cards. So kind of an interesting denial that we don't see too often. I feel like in the Pokemon trading card game, and who knows, maybe there's some effects coming soon that are like Exigate prop or Propagation Execute or like mm -hmm. the Eldegoss versus Seeker stuff, um, like Eldegoss V, whatever. Um, there could be some stuff in the future, maybe not this set, but in future sets that could make this card a little bit more impactful. Who knows? I mean, the two things I think it works well against mm -hmm. is any deck that plays energy retrieval or super energy retrieval, mm -hmm. think Chen Pao. Yep. I don't think they're prevalent enough for this card to be run, but like that would turn that off, which is really annoying. Oh, yeah. Um, or if for whatever reason you played against um, a lost box that had a higher count of Clara rather than Super Rod, also would be a really annoying card. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see where this 
goes. But Sean, do you have another card that maybe you want to talk about? Rolling down, I will say um, the one. There's a trio of cards I haven't read all oh, three. Oh God! Of them, there's a <laughs> Simiseer, a Simisage, and a Simipore, and the uh, ability on them is if you have all three in play, it's basically Reggie all over again, <laughs> but with monkeys this time. Um, you can ignore all colorless attack costs. So they all have, I believe, a single colored attack cost. So like one grass, one fire, or one water. I haven't gotten down to the semi poor. The grass type one is mid. It's like a hundred, and then you know doesn't take damage from Pokemon with abilities. But that's I don't think a huge deal. The Simiseer though does a hundred and ninety damage for one fire energy, which you know if for a uh, a, a single prize deck is pretty pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, the only downside, which you know, you I'm sure know very well <laughs> is that they're all stage ones, which is, uh, you know, anyone who played the Reggie decks knows if you're missing one of those pieces, your deck does nothing. And especially with a stage one deck, it's much easier to be missing one of those pieces. So, yeah, but I, I thought I'd just point it out because it's interesting. There's also right under it. I want to mention Volcanion. So Volcanion for one fire energy, it does 20 damage, but you're not necessarily worried about that. Choose up to two of your bench Pokemon for each of those Pokemon. Attach a basic fire energy card from your discard pile to that Pokemon. We've seen in the past Volcanions have this uh, energy acceleration ability. The last one being from Unbroken Bonds, a very, very good card. That came from deck, but there's a little bit of potential here in this Volcanion with fire decks because you can choose whatever Pokemon you want. It doesn't have to be a fire Pokemon. You can accelerate some energy on the first turn of the game, you know, do an aggressive research, do an aggressive squawk ability, uh, get this Volcanion out and uh, accelerate some energy on it or do other Pokemon on the bench. Yeah, I mean, like, if there are good fire Pokemon, I think the question would become, like, uh, if, if this is assuming you're not running the Charizard engine, basically, mm-hmm. right? Um, which is, you know, they, there could be a world in which there's a different fire-type Pokemon. I think we see some coming up here that might be interesting, but, um, yeah. Along good with to... one in the metal-type section. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so... The next one on my list, Jake, I'm just mm-hmm. skipping down to the Armor Rouge EX real quick. And then there's one right below that that we can talk about, which might be more interesting. But <laughs> uh, the Armor Rouge EX is stage two. Boo. Uh, has the ability. If this Pokemon no, has Armor full Rouge HP, is stage it, one. Oh, is it a stage one? Yeah, it's I don't a stage one. I guess I don't know why I'm thinking of it as a stage two. Maybe because it feels to me like the... Uh, it feels to me like it's the starter Pokemon style, but... Yeah, it does. Um, okay. Stage 1, not so bad then. 260 HP, beefy. And it takes 80 less damage, assuming that it has full HP. Um, which, you know, in theory is good. That would put it at effectively 340 HP. And then it's attack for two colorless. Does 40 plus, and then 40 more for each fire attached to this Pokemon. So, you know, you have to put a lot of energy onto this guy for it to do a decent amount of damage, but technically no damage cap. Um, but I would say the big challenge with this one is one damage counter, just one is all you need uh, for this ability to be useless, uh, on top of the fact that you have Path to the Peak. So, but It, uh, it could be interesting yeah. playing, this, uh, playing this deck with something like the, whatchamacallit, the Radiant Serena. Right, because if you are facing something like Lost Box and they're doing the Halucha Pings, right? Halucha Pings, mm-hmm. so you at least have one on you getting you up to the active. Uh, your Radiant Serena can just heal it right off. Um, so very interesting, especially when you talk about the Volcanion up here that can accelerate energies onto the Armor Rouge EX. I think that'd be very, very cool. Uh, getting some stuff on that but i i do agree i think it's just going to take a little bit too much for what the format has developed with ex's being in the like 260 to 330 range depending on what stage they are 
Um, so I just don't think it'll work alongside V starts as well. I don't see it. I don't know why, unless you do like a Charizard turbo build with like the armor rouge, where you just like evolve Charizard and you just load it with energies, that might be a decent early game attacker actually. For Charizard. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Because um, Charizard's problem is that it can't hit early. So if you just play like more energy recyclers and stuff like that, or super rods or whatever, um, you can you can just chug a bunch of energies on there. Well, then you have enough Charizards to power up your own Charizards. Maybe this is not yeah. as good as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about this one, honestly. Um, there's not really a good fire energy accelerator um, mm -hmm. at the moment. Like Charizard's all right, but it's a stage two on top of a stage one. And outside of that, Volcanion gets you one energy a turn before, and then you have the stadium that puts an energy on. But you would have to play Radiant Serena with that because it puts two damage counters. Um, so it's, it's interesting. But Jake, do you want to talk about Iron Moth, the first of our future Pokemon? The first of the new gimmick in the Pokemon trading card game with ancient and future Pokemon. This is a basic 130 HP fire type Pokemon. Has the ability Thermal Reactor. Once during your turn when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, you may move any amount of fire energy from your other Pokemon to it. So it's got the uh, Heatran. Heatran GX effect where uh, you just move energies the weird ear effect right where you just move energies on top of it but comparatively to heatran and weird ear iron moth doesn't have uncapped damage for two fires in a colorless it can do heat ray for 120 damage but the next turn the pokemon can't use heat ray and it has a two retreat cost so just get your escape ropes and and switch carts ready if it doesn't get knocked I about, out i honestly think about this card jake as being akin to do you remember unbroken bronze volcanian how it had an attack that did 110 damage but yeah the pokemon itself was 120 hp well, i think it was like um, i think it was like it does 50 damage and then if you have like three or more energies on it or something like that it did 60 more Something like that. I yeah, think the exactly. total was 110. Yeah, and then its HP, though, was 120. Mm -hmm. And this one, I think of it similarly, right? It's, it does 120, and its HP is 130. So it can knock out on their other 120 HP Pokemon, which Volcanion was great in matches that weren't mirrors to knock out little baby Pokemon that might be... Little Jirachis. Exactly. Like those... <laughs> You know, just taking some early prizes because 120 HP right now is a sweet spot number mm -hmm. for non-evolving basics. Um, so, I don't know. This feels like if you're playing a fire deck, this is a good attacker for, you know, your lost box matchups because let's just say, it, it, this is an annoying card to deal with, Jake. Like, if you're playing lost box, it's 130 HP, which means you can't knock out <laughs> with Sableye mm -hmm. in one go. So it, it's interesting. Can we talk about another? I'm going to skip to another card that I think is going to be yeah. very annoying to deal with that I think is a really, really cool effect that I don't know if we've seen this in the Pokemon trading card game at this point. This is my low tick that I'm going to be looking yeah. at in the water section has the ability lifeboat. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may use this ability. Each player puts a basic Pokemon from their discard pile on their bench. Your opponent chooses first. So, unfortunately, you know, your opponent decides what Pokemon they're putting onto their bench. But the little caveat is if you use this at a specific point in the game, they might have no other option but to... Um, Put a pokemon down on their bench or i think if i'm reading this correctly and if this is translated correctly you can play this card and use it to your own advantage even if your opponent doesn't have any basic pokemon in their discard pile so very very cool effect i think on this melodic don't worry about its attack it sucks um 
but like i think the ability is really really cool it's again pokemon has been doing this thing with the last couple sets where they're playing around with different you know card effects we're seeing a lot more card effects that are very uncanny to pokemon and how the game has been going but they're trying out testing new things they're putting new things out there and i love this i love this card jake the next card on my list is the garchomp ex mm -hmm. um it is this one is a stage two right yes that, <laughs> this okay. one's a stage two all right uh 320 hp it's a terras uh terra type so you know it is a water type garchomp which is weird but it mm -hmm. takes it really it deals with fighting energy so for one fighting you do 160 and then you can attach three fighting energy from your discard to to your benched uh pokemon in any way you like which for 160 I, damage that's really good and that's honestly, insane i can't remember i can't remember the last time there was a three fighting energy accelerator in the format like that seems that seems kind of unique um, um the only thing that i can think of is like ground on maybe the, the old ground on maybe yeah well i think there was a ground on it, it was more recent i think it was in like a starter deck or something okay. a theme deck that accelerated energies from the discard pile i could be wrong about that um but it, to your point it's not very common especially in meta decks <laughs> yeah and the fact that you have also a water typing um i don't know if that's necessarily good or bad to be honest but it is interesting that you can play water typed pokemon with a fighting deck you know, it just gives you a little extra coverage, either mm -hmm. if you're playing against something that you're normally weak to or vice versa. Um, that's like, it's cool. And then the second attack is also interesting. Sonic Dive for two colorless. You discard two energy from it, and it does 120 to one of your opponent's Pokemon, including the bench. So, you know, you can do some cleanup on something that you've done a decent amount of damage to. So I think this Pokemon is incredibly useful. Um, I don't know where this deck would live like where you know it is a stage two, melanie which is, you know, want, want. well i mean, I mean melanie well i don't know if you want to use melanie color. with water you know because well, i think honestly you play this with like a fighting deck well melanie only accelerates to the v's as well anyways well yeah so there uh, but, but it, what i was yeah. trying to allude to before my brain just preserved <laughs> um you're playing with fighting energies Sean, we have another EX terrestrial Pokemon that uses fighting energies. Can you recall it? Oh, the Tyranitar. The lightning type, type Tyranitar. Lightning type Tyranitar. So here you are. You're hitting fighting type weakness if you're playing a fighting type deck because you're using fighting energies, right? You might have some mm -hmm. like basic fighting attackers that trade the Stone Journer. Possibly, I don't know, like some, some of those guys. You play Garchomp right for the water weakness and you play tyranitar for the lightning weakness no oh, interesting i mean all with good I mean, synergy guess, with fighting energy i guess the question becomes do you have the space to run two stage two lines i mean you, look charizard does it with yeah. the yacht so maybe yeah i mean you know there's a world in which and it doesn't have to whatever. be it doesn't have to be a big like matchup or mix up right like you could probably like you could maybe try to do pidgeot garchomp mm -hmm. ex and tyranitar maybe garchomp is the main attacker so you run like you know the the 212 of garchomp and a 101 of tyranitar right mm -hmm. but just having the ability especially with these uh terrestrial types to like start we have enough of them now that you can like start comboing pokemon if you want so it's very very cool that now that now you have this like opportunity to do that because there's no unlike the video game there's no like you can only have one type of terrestrial pokemon in your deck like you don't have that you can put as many as you want in um it just it, some decks might suck but a couple of the <laughs> things i do want to note about this garchomp ex remember that the Terrastol EX types basically have bench barrier for themselves. If they're the EX Pokemon when they're on the bench, they cannot 
be affected by attacks. So that's one thing to note, but also this Garchomp is a free retreater. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Garchomp, a very, um, very fast Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, do you want to talk about the next card on the list? I would say that the next card that I want to talk about on this list, I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble deciding between Vanillix and Serena V, so I'm just going to go through both of them really quickly. Well, Vanillix. do Serena first. Okay. I would do Serena first, because its first attack leads, I think, into Vanillix. Okay, so Serena EX, it's a water-type terrestrial EX Pokemon Stage 2, similar to Garchomp, except it uses grass energies. The first attack, Icicle Soul, put damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon until its remaining HP is 30, and then for two grass energies, uh, Trope Kick, 180 damage, heal 30 damage from this Pokemon, and it recovers from all special conditions, so if you hate Venomoth, this is the deck for you, um, potentially, I guess. <laughs> um, 310 HP, and it goes well with this Vanillax because you have this Serena EX using this grass type attack, and then you have this Vanillax on the bench, this stage two Pokemon with the ability Frigid Room. Your opponent's Pokemon that have 40 HP or less remaining can't attack. And I love this combination, and I love that you pointed out these two cards to me, Sean, because this means Vanillix doesn't have to be in the active. Yeah, this it, stops from it's anywhere. Crazy. Um, I, I, I don't know if this Vanillix, too, even outside of the Serena, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think about how many decks do a decent amount of damage, but not quite enough to knock something out. I mean, but we literally just in, saw it like this weekend, right? With the right. with the finals of like the knockouts, you know. Um, I don't remember if it was the yeah. finals or the semifinals, but the second place finisher um, with the Gyarados V Max, there was a point where he miscalculated the amount of damage that he needed for the knockout, and he was yeah. like ten HP off. Um, yeah, that could work well in this situation. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I've also, I think to myself, like, there might be a world in which you play a Vanillax deck, and the goal of the deck is to basically trap your opponent, and it's a, it's a control deck. You spread enough damage through whatever attackers, and once somebody's bench is full, right, you basically uh -huh. just, they can't attack with any Pokemon for the rest of the game. So like if, there's a world in which that's a game. So if you if you make sure all of their Pokemon have 40 HP or less, and it goes into your opponent's turn, they mm -hmm. have to pass, right? Because they can't attack. Well, and they can draw cards. They can do whatever they but want. Yeah, they, unless they have right, unless they have a penny, or they're playing um, healing cards, which Right, like, you know, there's only a few cards mm -hmm. that can really save you that are played. Um, so I could also imagine a control-style deck whose sole purpose is to do damage. It doesn't matter how many prizes your opponents take, but get you to a point where you have a Vanillax. Like, what if you even, I'm just thinking out loud here, what if you had Glamora and Vanillax? Ooh. So Gl Glamora is online. You're controlling your opponent a little bit. They can't play more than, what, three bench Pokemon mm -hmm. on either side. And then you lock them out because you've done enough damage. You know, I mean, look, you know, Paths of the Peak can get around that. But I don't know. There's a world in which I think this is a really interesting control card. <laughs> yeah, you play Glamora EX, Solrock, Lunatone to <laughs> not have Stadium's effect. And then somehow you also fit Vanillix on your bench. Sure, with your three Pokemon, it's great. Yeah, yeah, the, there it is. There's your bench, but I really like that combination of cards. Uh, I'll go down to the next one, which is Galisopod or Galisopod EX. Mm -hmm. um, this one here is a stage one water type. 270, is that what I read? Oh my. Yes, 270. One. So its first attack for two colors just does 70, which 
you know, hey, you do you, Golisopod. <laughs> it's pretty good for attack. Lost Box, potentially. Knock I out guess. all the comfies. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the second attack for a water and two colorless. Swing and skedaddle, 170. <laughs> discard an energy, and if you do, switch it with one of your bench. So it's a hit-and-run deck, but it's a hit-and-run deck that does 170 damage. So, you know, there's a small little world in which you play this with, you know, Mimikyu or Klefki or other annoying cards that you can leave up in the active. Uh, do we still have Milk Tank in format? I don't believe so. Dang, no, but I Mimikyu was going to say, is, that's another Mimikyu one. Mimikyu is your Milk Tank. Mimikyu is good enough, I would say. Yeah. But yeah, I think this Glycopod is cool. It's a shame that it has two, uh, three retreat cost as well. <laughs> I mean, your attack basically does the uh, retreating, but That's I would true. have loved to see this have a little bit lower of a retreat cost, but <laughs> I'll take it um, as well. Um, yeah, what's the next card on your list, Jake? I'm going to go into the future Pokemon here. Iron Bundle. Love this little guy. Basic Pokemon 100 HP. Has the ability Hyper Blower. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch it out. You may switch out your opponent's active Pokemon to the bench. Your opponent chooses the new active Pokemon. If you do, discard this Pokemon and all attached <coughs> cards. So it's a forced escape rope that's one-sided, and then you get rid of the iron bundle. So I think that's really, really interesting as well. Again, you know, talking about just different unique effects in the Pokemon trading card game. Um, and it's also got an interesting attack for water colorless colorless 80 damage if the defending pokemon is an evolution pokemon it can't attack during your opponent's next turn so got a little bit of interesting stuff in there as well for um for water decks it wouldn't surprise me if a deck like chin pao ran a one of of this because you know in chin pao you run water pokemon anyways and so you could get into a situation where you can start attacking with this, but also it kind of fits well with your deck with like Irida and stuff to where you can disrupt your opponent a little bit, force them to put up a new Pokemon. Yeah, interesting card. Um, I think if we ever get another water deck that does a lot of spread damage, you can see mm -hmm. this getting a lot of play. Big Sad, uh, which I'm sure you may have noticed as well, Rescue Carrier does not work with Iron Bundle, so nope. you can't repeatedly do this too easily. You would need to play Super Rods or Claros. But, you know. <laughs> um, next Pokemon on my list is going to be the Mewtwo EX. I think we're getting a lot of interesting Terra types. I, I'm interested. It's interesting that the first versions of the Terra types did not change their typical typing, but mm -hmm. the last two sets, starting with like Charizard and Tyranitar, it seems like they're really leaning into alternate typing. So this Mewtwo EX is a lightning type uh, Mewtwo, which is pretty wild. Also, it, you know, it's, it's a nice basic. So take Psychic Energy, um, 230 HP. The first one, Trans Charge, attach two, two basic Psychic from your discard pile to this Pokemon. A little bit of a weird first attack, to be honest. Um, oh, it says to your Pokemon in any way you'd like. Oh, okay, okay. That's, mm -hmm. It's not terrible. If you are playing a Psychic deck that doesn't play Gardevoir for whatever reason, like, that's kind of interesting. Um, and then the second attack for two Psychic, Photon Kinesis, 10 plus, 30 more for each Psychic attached to all of your Pokemon, which this one, Jake, this is the interesting one because you can run this in a uh, Gardevoir deck, it's to all of your Pokemon, so you can attach energy to a bunch of different things, so you're not loading up only one Pokemon with a bunch of damage. And this one is just, you know, attach from hand, attach from hand, or you know, some other combination of uh, attachments just for two. I was going to say Shining Arcana. Attach from hand, Shining Arcana for one. Right, exactly. With the little baby um, Gardevoir? Yeah. I think this is a really cool Mewtwo. It hits for lightning weakness, so it gives you a little bit of a... And then also, because it's lightning, it would stay at 230 HP, which is often a problem I have found with Gardevoir, is mm -hmm. typically if you want to take a big attack, you whatever you're leaving in the active is so damaged, it's basically dead. Um, 
So Mewtwo is a really good alternate option, I find. So pulling out the calculator 30 times, mm -hmm. right? Because it's doing 30 times plus 10. Mm -hmm. So um, what does Gardevoir usually run? Like 11, 12 energies? Or I, 9? 11, I would say 11. 11 is a good, no, 11 is I think a good number. So hitting for 340 damage total, um, hypothetically in that scenario, you can't eclipse everything in there. If you were able to do that so could be interesting um i think there's a little bit especially if lugia becomes prevalent still and continues to stay relevant and actually stays good mm -hmm. i mean we've seen gardevoir players i think when gardevoir and um the last set was first introduced people in japan were playing luxray in gardevoir because gardevoir was playing those reversal energies right so um, if we've seen that, it wouldn't surprise me to see a Mewtwo EX in there coming in as a finisher. Could be really good in the in the Lugia matchup. Um, and honestly, with the 10 plus 30s and the 30s being everywhere, and like you said, you know, not putting damage counters on itself, it might be worthy enough for a spot just for that as a different attacker. Late game. I mean, you know you can throw a bravery charm on this guy and it's a 280 HP attacker mm -hmm. that unless you deal with like, if you can spread the energy out right with Gardevoir and a bunch of your other Pokemon, your opponent may be like, well, I'll take out whatever in the back. They're going to boss around this to get rid of more energy, but that leaves your other dude. And if you still have a Gardevoir up, you can just put that energy right back. So it's kind of, it's a bit of an existential threat attacker that you may not be able to deal with in one turn. It'll be interesting to see where it goes along with the other lightning Pokemon in this set, Sean. Uh, we'll talk about one first before we get into the real kicker. I would say that has been causing a lot of commotion over the last couple months, I feel like. But Tapu okay. Koko EX is the first one, 210 HP EX basic Pokemon. Has two attacks, one lightning colorless attack for 30 plus damage. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an attack of your opponent's Pokemon during their last turn, this attack does 90 more damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. So that's really interesting because we see revenge all the time, revenge type attacks. You know, if Pokemon's knocked <clears throat> out, do extra damage. It surprises me that this only does 120 for two energies, <clears throat> but... It has an extra effect on it with paralysis. Paralysis, I think, is very, very nice. Yeah, it's a very underutilized, a bit like special condition. Um, but every now and again, there's a Pokemon that comes around that is perfect for the meta. Um, I'm thinking back to like Alolan Raichu, like Raichu and mm -hmm. Alolan Raichu GX. And it had an attack that would paralyze you if it, I think if it came from the bench or something. Um, and so this one is a little bit more niche, but unless somebody is playing switches and escape ropes or they're playing therapeutic energy, which, you know, there's some of that in the format, but it could be that that's just a way your opponent takes one knockout, you go in and you paralyze them, you can knock them out before they can really respond so you can sort of catch up. It also has a second attack for lightning, lightning, colorless, 180 damage, discard and energy from the Pokemon. So pretty basic, I feel like, kind of thing. 180 damage, not really anything to scoff at, especially when we have electric generators in the format. Could mm -hmm. probably hit three, but let me tell you, the amount of Maridons this weekend within two energy attacks, I don't know, Sean. <laughs> Jake, do you want to get into, I think that you were alluding that Iron Hands is the uh, the Pokemon that has got everyone in a tizzy. So this is um, the end-all, be-all card, as everyone is saying. <laughs> Doomsday is coming. It is a future Pokemon, 230 HP, basic electric type, has two <laughs> different attacks that I feel like are pretty all right. The first attack for Lightning Lightning Colorless is called Arm Press for 160 damage. Very vanilla, just straight up 160 damage for three energies. Not too bad. The second attack, Amp You Very Much. Pokemon had a field day this set with making names mm -hmm. for attacks with uh, Skip and Skedaddle, what you said earlier. 
Um, yeah. That and Ampy very much. Anyways, this attack, lightning, and then three colorless energy, so four energies total. 120 damage. If your Pokemon's... 120 damage. If your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, take one more prize. Hmm. There's a lot of Pokemon, Sean, that are uh, yeah. pretty small, running around right now, cough, cough, lost box, that uh, would yeah. not like this. No, um, and Maridon is a good deck. I think... I don't know. I'm not as doomsday about it because it does take four energy, mm -hmm. right? And, like, look, you can lightning, lightning, double turbo, do 100 damage and still do as much damage as you need for Comfy and Sableye. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, you could in one turn, theoretically, electric generator, two electrics onto this guy, attach a double turbo, and... Turn one, start knocking out Comfies for two prizes, going second. How how likely is that to happen? I don't know. I just and I think this is a it's a good card that needs to exist in a format where you have Lost Box that just is refuses to die in many ways. But outside of those matchups, I I I think the only other deck that would utilize this in any significant way is right now is probably Lugia. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can, it only takes one lightning energy to do the um, second attack. So, think about like, you know, Stoutland V was like a really good card for a hot minute to take extra prizes. Mm -hmm. Well, Iron Hands is not that different, right? One luminous energy, a double turbo, and one other thing. Well, Easy. the luminous energy wouldn't work. Why not? Because Luminous Energy says that if it's the only special energy on a Pokemon. Oh, I thought it was you can't attach more than one Luminous Energy. No, I'm pretty sure it's like any special energy. Special energy. Hmm, interesting. Well, then that would, <laughs> that turns it off then. But, yeah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not for Lugia then, but if that's the case. Yeah, just um, double checking it. Uh, if this card is attached to it, has any other special energy just one energy oh, okay. instead well that's sad uh yeah then th there's only one deck that plays this and it's my on <laughs> and i just don't see it being the most insane thing in the world i don't and know my two cents the thing about it too in my opinion and i can understand you know we're in adp trauma right we are <laughs> reliving the adp times and we are like, oh my god, please no extra prize attackers. <laughs> like, you know, we live during that era, Sean, you and I. Um, it mm -hmm. kind of sucked, especially, uh, what was it? Um, dude, I'm trying to think of this set. It was like Sword, uh, Cosmic Eclipse, and Sword, Sword and Shield, shield base. base, with you either played like ADP... Keldeo or ADP Zacian, or you played yeah. Chinchino Mill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like those, were, those were the only two decks. This one, and I agree, you know, it can be very good in Maridon, but if you think about it in something like Maridon, you think about it in really just any other deck, you have to commit a lot to it. And yeah, you know, you have double turbo in that can lower it, but also, you know, just hit pretty hard. Um, but I don't. You're, you're committing a lot to it. This feels like a finisher kind of thing, in my opinion. You finish with this Pokemon, you know, you're down two prizes to one, you knock out the little bench sitter, or you knock out the damaged Pokemon, and you can win the game from there. Because you are, you're putting so much into this, it feels like right now. So, who knows? Maybe... Yeah. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it actually terrorizes the format and stuff right now. I don't think it's doomsday, but I think it's very impactful in the format. Yeah. Um, Jake, getting to the psychic Pokemon. Mm -hmm. uh, the only psychic Pokemon, I'm like looking at it now, and I think the only psychic Pokemon that interests me, well, maybe there's one more, but <laughs> uh, initially is Zatu. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to call it out because because of, of its ability. If for whatever reason you don't want to play Gardevoir, or maybe you do, 
and you want to draw cards as well. I don't know. I feel like Gardevoir and Curlia does that, but Satu has the ability once during your turn, you can attach a basic psychic energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. And if you attach an energy in this way, you draw two cards. So it's kind of like Shadow Rider Keldy. <laughs> Shadow Rider Calyrex. Calyrex. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you like the flavor of that, but you know, you're looking for something that doesn't give up three prizes. Zatu's your, your, your dude. <laughs> Completely replaces Curlia. See you later, yeah. Curlia refinement. Discarding them? No. How about attaching them? Just kidding. Exactly. Um, it is very interesting, though, and I do think there could be some psychic decks that benefit from this, um, but mm-hmm. um, it's, it's very nice. Poor Shadow Rider, though. Poor Shadow Rider VMAX. <laughs> I will uh, say, Sean, looking at this, I want to talk about Screamtail. So this is mm-hmm. the first ancient Pokemon that we're going to talk about. 90 HP, psychic, basic Pokemon. So level ballable, level ballable. Has this second attack on here, psychic, colorless, roaring scream. This attack does 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon for each damage counter on this Pokemon. And so with something like a Bravery Charm, as you alluded earlier to Pokemon, this can have 140 HP, can have 130 in terms of damage, which would be 260 Snipe to any Pokemon on the field with something like Gardevoir VMAX. So um, this is a very, very cool card in my opinion. I think this can be included in Gardevoir and do quite well. Even if you only put four damage counters on it, doing 80 to a snipe could be beneficial in your favor. I'm not 100% sure uh, where. Well, it would be 160. Because if you put four, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. four damage counters, you put four energy yeah. onto it, you're doing eight. So 160, it's, you're 10 shy of knocking out Luminion. Mm-hmm. Which may matter, but you know the biggest thing the biggest thing that I really like about Screamtail and like Gardevoir, for instance, is that like you mentioned, you know, correcting my math 160, you can hit harder and snipe harder than um Cresselia, right? Cresselia mm-hmm. being an inclusion that we see often in Gardevoir decks. Um so that could be really, really beneficial. Now, Cresselia heals some damage from your Pokemon as well. As Screamtail does not do that. But if you're, if the only benefit at this point in the format is the sniping potential of like Cresselia, Screamtail replaces that because it's way easier to find with Level Ball because you're already playing Level Ball for your Curlias. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really like this screen tail. Um, to your point, I think it's just a great attacker for Gardevoir. And it may be that Gardevoir then wants to play something like Radiant Alakazam, you know, because that 160 is good, but it doesn't necessarily knock out those benched Luminions or, you know, s- smaller benched Pokemon. I also think about like Mew EX, I believe, is 180. Mm-hmm. So if you could move two damage counters elsewhere that maybe aren't necessary this is a really sneaky way to like take that prize off the bench it can be very interesting in the future and going into another future pokemon sean iron (laughs) valiant ex um this is a basic 220 hp psychic pokemon with the ability tachi tachi on i don't know (laughs) Uh, tachi on bits once during your turn when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So, Sean, you talk about that extra um, two damage to finish off Pokemon. Maybe use Radiant mm-hmm. Alakazam, or maybe use Iron Valiant EX. Yeah, I mean, I really like this one, too, because um, if you think about it, if you go first and you can get into the the Gardevoir EX on turn two. Typically with Gardevoir, you don't necessarily have enough psychic energy in the discard to take a big knockout, like a 200 plus HP knockout. Mm -hmm. But without Invaliant, say you get a couple of these down. Now, I don't know if you would play more than one, but even if it's one down, right? 
a lot of V's out there, I'm looking at RCSV, uh, Lugia V, et cetera. They do, uh, and some of the EXs as well, they have 220 or 230 HP. You can put a couple of damage counters here and there and then attack for 200 damage on the second turn, which if you can put four damage counters, you can knock out basically any basic EX and V Pokemon almost anyone that, that is relevant in the format right now. So I think as an early game attacker in a Gardevoir deck, this is a really powerful uh, card. It's also got an attack, Psychic, Psychic, Colorless, Laser Blade for 200 damage during your next turn. This Pokemon can't attack. So Sean, do you want to move into the next Pokemon? I think we got fighting Pokemon yeah. now. Yeah, uh, I'm scrolling down. I'm just going to go straight to Hoopa EX. I don't know if there's too much more mm -hmm. above it, but Hoopa EX, 220 basic uh, for two dark energy. So this is another terror type. So it's a fighting type Ho Ho Hoopa EX that uses dark energy. Um, energy crush, it does 50 times for each energy card, energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So, you know, if you're playing against that Lugia, <laughs> right? Like, this is going to really do a lot of damage. Um, you have to get over the fighting Gardevoir, type but... resistance, though. Oh, you're, true. you're right, you're right. <laughs> but, you know, hey, it's a lot of damage. If, you're if you hate Maridon, this is the card for you. <laughs> and then for three uh, dark type energy, you do 200 damage, and you can't use that attack next turn. Um does Dark Patch... I don't believe Dark Patch works on this Pokemon, though, because it's not a Dark type, right? Yeah, I think Dark Patch is only for Dark type Pokemon. I'm looking it up right now. Dark Patch says, yeah, to one of your bench Dark type Pokemon. Hmm. Yeah, not, not, not particularly interesting comparatively, but, you know. <laughs> there could uh, be Jake, something the out there. One? There is a Toxtricity as well for 260 HP fighting type Pokemon. Another Terrestrial EX type stage one with lightning type energies on there. Lightning, lightning, knocking hammer, 70 damage, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. And then for three lightning energies, do 270 damage, discard three lightning energy from your Pokemon in play. So I want to look up Flaffy. Does Flaffy say specifically... Flaffy says it can bench. accelerate to just benched Pokemon. Doesn't say benched lightning Pokemon. So this is a Ooh. card that maybe you could inc include in Maridon potentially. I'm not 100% sure because it's a stage one and you have to evolve it. But having that fighting type could be beneficial. Yeah, and you get a big body at 260 mm -hmm. HP compared to Maridon. The fact that you can output 270, I mean, we see with slacking, right? Like, being able to hit more than 250 or, like, above that range, that's kind of like, oh, man, that's a cool number because you mm -hmm. add in Defiance Band or you add in, um, you know, there's actually a stadium I've been playing with in Wigglytuff that adds 10 damage for Stage 1 Pokemon and Toxtricity EX is a Stage 1. Mm -hmm. So for three lightning energy plus three from the bench that you have to discard or the three that are on it you could do 280 exactly um so yeah interesting sean do you have any other cards that maybe you want to talk about in here uh i mean we'll go down to the next ancient type in slitherwing mm -hmm. um for one fighting this is a basic pokemon by the way a fighting type for one fighting discard the top card of your opponent's deck pretty pretty mid uh, and for two fighting, it does 120, but it also does 90 damage to itself, and it burns your opponent's active? I don't... I'm not sure about this one. So yet. it really yeah. does 140. <laughs> yeah, I guess. With the burn. For two fighting. Unless they have therapeutic. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's cool. I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it, but that's just me. There, Jake, what's the next one for you? There's a basic EX Pokemon, ancient EX Pokemon, Sandy Shocks EX. Has this ability magnetic absorption. So once during your turn, if your opponent has four or fewer prize cards remaining, you may use this ability. Attach a basic fighting energy card from your discard pile to this 
Pokemon. So very, very interesting. You know, it only procs at a specific ability. We're seeing different cards lately uh, really are influenced by opponents' prize cards. You know, like Radiant Charizard being the prime example, I would say, on there. But now we have another card in Sandy Shocks EX, Accelerating Fighting Energy. So a lot of fighting acceleration in this, in this set, Sean. It has a uh, attack for fighting, fighting colorless, 200 damage during your next turn. This Pokemon can't attack. Uh, this is, I don't know if I like this, but I'm trying to, the 200 damage, I'm trying to give it a reason for being good, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like, there is a world in which you can power this up in one turn. You know, if you play a Raihan, Attach one, use its ability, attach two, and then attach from hand. You know, there's there's a world in which that's possible, um, but... The problem that I have with this is I just don't know why you just don't play Koridon Tinglu. Right, exactly, yeah. Like it, just, it, it just kind of feels like it's not doing that much more. Like, yeah, you get one energy on board. Mm -hmm. I could see this being a Pokemon if you... Say you're not running the Garchomp that also uses fighting. And you're looking for a way to accelerate fighting energy. There was a world, remember when ADP used energy switch? Like, you could have a couple of these on the bench, and it's kind of like your flaffy engine in fighting, where you can put fighting energy onto it, and then energy switch them to whoever you're actually attacking with. Um, but I don't know if that's maybe too far to walk for that effect. It might be in this format. This format yeah. feels a little too fast at times. Yeah, but that, that's the only thought I had. Is I was like, okay, it's ability-based energy acceleration, so maybe, maybe that's what's in their head, the designers. The designers. But, um, <laughs> what else do they have in their head, Sean? Um, you know, the Crobat, I'll, I'll briefly mention this. For two colorless, Crobat says... 50 damage, choose item cards or supporter cards. During your opponent's next turn, they can't play any of that type of trainer card from their hand. That's super annoying. I don't know if it's clearly not as good as just straight up item lock with other things necessarily, but, it, it, you know, I think this is an interesting attack. I don't know what I do with it, but I just wanted to point it out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's another Crobat. I'm pretty sure there's three type of Crobats in format right now. One of the Crobats is this one. Another one of the Crobats is the evolution line where you draw cards when you're evolving. Like you evolve Zubat to Golbat, okay, yeah. you draw a card. You evolve Golbat to Crobat, you either draw two or three cards. And then there's mm -hmm. another one where the Crobat has an attack that says if the Pokemon is knocked out by damage, take an extra prize. Hmm... Interesting. I don't think it's a good deck. No. no. <laughs> but I wanted to point that ability out because as I read it, I was like, that's kind of interesting. There's another um, cool wait. draw supporter in this uh, dark section, Sean. Okay. This is Which one are we looking at? Absol, the basic Pokemon, 100 HP dark type Pokemon, has this first attack. It's called Draw Awareness. Draw awareness. I can't wait to hear people pronounce this potentially. You may discard any number of cards from your hand until you have four or fewer. Then draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Could be cool um, to like get energies away from your hand or like Archaeops, potential evolutions things like that be able to discard them pretty easily because it doesn't really i mean it doesn't limit to how many you can discard you just have to discard until you have four or fewer so you could go down to one you could go down to zero if you want and then draw a fresh set of five cards um i think it's a pretty interesting attack yeah i mean it definitely like this is a setup pokemon if you're going second right mm -hmm. um to your point Archaeops, I think Lugia would maybe benefit from this because it's a setup deck. And if you were able to get your Archaeops in hand, turn one, you could just discard them with this effect, um, not leave your Lugia in the active to use its attack. 
And then just sort of, you know, not have to worry about finding ultra balls or using Professor Burnett. It's a good thought. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one that I want to talk about is the ancient type <laughs> brute bonnet. Um, the ability toxic powder once during your turn, if this Pokemon has an ancient booster energy capsule attached, you may make both active Pokemon poisoned. Um, benefit here is you could play this with therapeutic energy. So nothing happens to you. Um, and then for dark, dark colorless, it does 120, but it can't attack during the next turn. I don't think that necessarily matters. I think the ability to just poison on a basic Pokemon from an ability. Um, what was the, oh, well, there's that hypno jinx deck that it needs to be asleep. So, but you know, you could play this with something like the radiant sneezler. I want to say, I was going to uh, say that, the clay doll. <laughs> what was it? The clay doll that said, um, mm. you do, put you knock yourself out. Yeah. And you put damage until they have 10. Yep. Yeah. That's a very good point. I mean, yeah, any, any like knock yourself out to give your opponent super small. Amount. Actually, Jake, I'm just thinking of this. Do you know the, um, the Serena that we're talking about? The, the Terra type Serena? That yeah. Puts your opponent down to 30. Oh, that feet. could be a good one. Yeah. If you play, it doesn't Radiant Sneasler add two damage counters for poison? Yes, it does in the checkup phase. So, Brute Bonnet, Radiant Sneasler, Serena, EX. That's a knockout. That's an instant knockout. That could be an interesting combo, Sean. You might be on to something here. Interesting. Because really, like, you've got a stage one and then two basics. That's actually not very hard to set up at all. Oh, dang. I okay. will say I there, think about that there is another Pokemon that does an auto knockout by itself. Sean, Ancient okay. EX Pokemon, Roaring Moon, Basic 230 HP Dark type Pokemon has two attacks. The first one, Dark Dark Colorless. Well, they're both Dark Dark Colorless. But the first one is Frenzied Gouging. Knock out your opponent's active Pokemon. If your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out in this way, this Pokemon does 200 damage to itself. So another instant hmm. knockout kind of method that we've been talking about does 200 damage to itself. It's interesting, though, that it leaves it with 30 HP left. I mean... I guess the thought there is like, especially since it's a two prizer and most cards they're printing now, like there's no three prizer. So it would be weird if you just give up two prizes to take two prizes because then you would have a lot of games that would end in ties. Mm -hmm. So I think they kind of have to consider that. If it was a one prizer, fine. I think a two prizer, though, they kind of have to leave it alive. There's the second attack that does 100 plus damage, but if there's a stadium that you discard in play you do 120 more so pretty much lugia this is a great pokemon mm -hmm. jake i don't know what your thoughts are but 220 easy take out the v's uh or maybe even the some of the ex's out there if it's something bigger cool just use the exact same energy um and then dark patch is still in format this this card is dope I think this is a very interesting one because there's a lot of turbo dark nuts out there um, mm -hmm. that could probably utilize this card. That could be really, really cool because like you said, you know, 220, very, very good number. We're not even talking about damage modifiers at this point of any kind that can um, that can up the damage in play. So a lot of possibilities with this. Um. Jake, uh, I'm thinking, I'm looking at the time, and I want to. I think we should do the rest of the Pokemon, mm -hmm. and then we can maybe next week cover off on all the trainers while we talk about other stuff. So that that works that out perfectly. Good? Yes. <laughs> um. So moving into the metal type Pokemon, um, I will say Jirachi is mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, Stellar Veil prevent all damage counters from being placed on your benched Pokemon by effects of attacks. Used by your opponent's basic Pokemon. So, Jirachi basically says, hey, Sableye, no. No. <laughs> Absolutely <you> not. <laughs> and it doesn't even need to be in the active, which is so gross. Mm -hmm. um, so, I really like how they've printed effectively a mana fee. A mana fee that seems well-balanced for damage counterplacement. I like that. 
It's a very nice how they've responded in this set to things like Lost Box. You know, you have Iron Hands, you have Jirachi. Um, you have a lot of these little cards in here that just kind of influence that part of the uh, the meta a little bit, maybe to nerf it a smidge. And I do believe that Jirachi is going to be used in a couple different decks. And it also has that little one colorless attack Search your deck for up to two basic energy cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. I mean, Iono's a thing, Judge is a thing, but like, eh, that's nice. Yeah. Spinning is winning. Jake, what's your next card on the list? I want to talk about Aegislash EX. It's a metal type mm -hmm. stage two, 330 HP Pokemon. It's interesting because like, I don't really care for its second attack, but the first attack for one metal energy does 70 times. This attack does 30 damage for each prize card you've taken. So it's interesting oh, because times, yeah. it's interesting because it's prize card you have taken, not what your opponent has taken. You know, we've seen a lot of cards recently, mm -hmm. you know, are influenced by your opponent's amount of prize cards. We talked about one earlier. Radiant Charizard being another one, Charizard EX being another one, but now we're starting to see a card that's like, okay, how many prizes have you taken? So, very, very cool, especially upping by 70. I feel like 70 is a really good number. Um, so, yeah, it'll be curious. I think the nice thing about this one is you have the same evolution line as the other Aegislash, mm -hmm. which is effectively Obstagoon. Being a stage two, it prevents all damage done to itself by EX and Vs. Um, so it's a nice one because you can play a wall deck at the start of the game. But then something that wall decks typically struggle with is pacing, right? You get to near the end of the game, and how do you really clean up, get those last couple of prizes before your opponent can find the answers? Um, and so this one can like slowly you know, make it annoying for your opponent by doing 120, and then when you finish the game, you slap down an Age of Slash EX on one of your other evolution lines, then you can do 240 or 280 or 350 damage for just one metal energy, which, yeah, I, it, it could be an interesting combo of a deck. There's another card I want to talk about real quick as we're nearing the end of our podcast. Skelleridge EX, Sean, Stage 2, 330 HP metal type Pokemon has the ability Incendiary Song. Once during your turn, you may discard a basic fire energy card from your hand in order to use this ability. During your turn, attacks used by your Pokemon do 60 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And then its attack for two fire does 160 damage. It's not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So Incendiary Song. Very good for powering up attacks on uh, your opponent. I've seen a lot of people talk about this card. I think I saw Daichi Shimada either make a Twitter post or a YouTube video on like this deck. Kind of a cool, mm. kind of a cool card that's coming in here, especially when fire is really popular. And the fact that they stack, right? So if mm -hmm. you happen to have multiple of these, you can do 120 more. Um, you know, I'm trying to think about, like, there is the other Skeledurge EX that exists that you could play this with. I'm just trying to think about evolution lines that you can get more value out of. I think Charizard. Committing to a... You could. You could do it with Charizard. I'm trying to think about, like, um, having two different stage two evolution lines, though, can sometimes be, I think, awkward. Mm -hmm. But if you were to say, you know, we have one evolution line of Skeledurge and then play different fire type Pokemon. Like this could be a deck where you have a couple of Skeledurges out. They're huge, a ton of energy, energy retrievals. And then you actually, your main attackers are one prize basics where you're adding 120 damage to something that's maybe normally like iron moth. I think it was, mm -hmm. that's normally doing 120. So all of a sudden that iron moth is doing 240 damage. That's pretty decent. It could be very, very cool. We've saw, we've seen in the past cards that do extra damage for discarding fire energies. Volcanion, 
I think Volcanion, Volcanion was a basic and it did 30 plus. Um, mm -hmm. So this being a little bit different, Volcanion was very, very good during its time in the X and Y era. I think it was like early X and Y. Um, so really cool to see the next iteration from it, in my opinion. Jake, talk about this Goldango. Mm -hmm. um, Goldango EX, I think if you enjoy Chen Pao but hate having to use Backscalibur, move over. Uh, Goldango is the, <laughs> the deck for you. Um, it has an ability. Once during your turn, you can draw a card. And if it's in the active, you can draw two instead. Which I'm like, okay, didn't need that, but thanks. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, you've got four of them out, so you load up your whole deck with Goldengos. You're drawing five cards a turn if all of them are out. Um, and then for one colorless energy, one colorless, that's the insane part. You don't need to power this guy up. Mm -hmm. 50 times. I game. think it's one metal energy. Oh, it's, it lists as C on here, but yeah. Yeah, the picture, right. the picture shows metal energy. The translation shows a colorless. So ah, right, right. whatever it is, it's sure. just one energy. So like for one energy, discard on any number of basic energy cards from your hand. It does 50 damage for each card you discarded. So you could run different energy if you want, but if for consistency, you could just run a bunch of metal energy um, and then run energy retrieval and run superior energy retrieval. You don't even need that, like I said, the Backscalibur line. It, the energy doesn't need to go into play. You just put it into your hand and you're good to go. Um, uh, this card is wild, Jake. I do believe that uh, Andrew Mahone and Jesse Parker were testing tabletop. And I can't remember if it was Jesse or Andrew that played Goldango, but it looked really, really cool. And it looked really, really fun. And it's, I mean, it's very early, you know, to showcase decks and stuff. Um, but could be a really, really cool card that sees a lot of play when it comes out. Jake, what's next on your list? I'll just talk about Porygon Z real briefly. Not anything crazy, but I just love Porygon. And this Porygon Z is real goofy as well. Flip a coin if heads attach up to four basic energy cards from your discard pile to this Pokemon of Tails. Discard an energy from this Pokemon. Gamba. <laughs> Dang. Uh, <laughs> and then it does, what, 40 times? 40 damage for each for energy, each energy. To it. Mm -hmm. That's That's cool. It's funky. It's, it's, I don't know if it's good, but it's funky. It's like just it. as funky as Mousehold EX, 230 HP, stage 1 type Pokemon. has the ability Solidarity. If this Pokemon is in the active spot and has damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, even when it's knocked out, put three damage counters on the attacking Pokemon for each of your Tandem House, Mousehold, and Mousehold EX and play. So, Mousehold, Sean... Stage one Pokemon Tandem House is the lower form of it, so you will be able um, to six Pokemon 180 damage for knocking it out. Would you? I'm trying to think like you know, you've got Tandem House, Mouse Hold, and Mouse Hold EX. Mouse Hold EX evolves from Tandem Mouse, mm -hmm. or is that like a stage two? Okay, so Mouse Hold is the stage one, Tandem Mouse is the basic. So at most, though, you can only have four Tandem Mouse in your deck, right? Yeah, but do you remember the so, Pokemon that transforms into other Stage 1 Pokemon? Transforms into other Stage 1s. Zorark. Uh -uh. Oh, right, So you right, can, you can spread Zoro. your Zorarks yeah. to be Mouse Holds, and then you can have some other Tandem Mouse to fill the spots. Okay, there we go. So you get six up there, you put, uh, you know, 18 damage counters mm -hmm. uh, on the attacking Pokemon. Just with the ability, that's crazy. Yeah, and then the attack for colorless, colorless, nom, nom, nom in scissors, 120 damage, draw two cards. So, very, very cool. I like Mouse Hold EX. I think it's funny. I think it's goofy. I don't know if it's going to be good, but at least it's cool. Um, I would talk about the Bombardier EX, but I don't think it's particularly Just talk good. about the first attack. <laughs> all right, all right. The first attack, fast carry for one colorless. Uh, if you go first, you can use it uh, on your first turn. 
search your deck for three basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench and shuffle. So, you know, if you are going first and maybe you're running a deck that, you know, you want to make sure you're as consistent as possible, it's a really great setup Pokemon. Um, and I guess the other benefit here is say you go first and your opponent can't knock this thing out on the first turn going second. If you really want to get it out of there, you just attach a double turbo after, and then you do 130 and shuffle it back into the deck, which like, okay, that's not terrible. It's very interesting, especially because we talk about some decks already play like Squawkability, right? So those decks that play the Squawkability, maybe they replace it with a Bombardier EX and do hmm. more in terms of setting up their board rather than discarding their, uh, discarding their hand to set up their board. I don't know. Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, I, I can see that seeing play in specific decks. Like, if you're playing a deck that is primarily reliant on maybe stage ones or stage twos even, but mm -hmm. probably I think stage ones get a huge benefit from this, then yeah, I could see it. I could see this doing something. Sean, do you have another card that you want to talk about, or are we going to call that wraps? I mean, we got one more. We got the Iron Jugulus, I think is what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is a future type Pokemon basic a three colorless energy homing headbutt 50 damage to three of your opponent's Pokemon that have any damage counters on them. So if you are playing a deck that puts damage counters here, there, everywhere, um, being able to do 50 damage spread to three Pokemon is really good um, for three colorless energy. And then for was that five colorless energy, Jesus, 150 damage. And if the Pokemon has a future booster energy capsule attached, it can be used for just triple colorless instead of quintuple colorless, which, sure, I guess that's... Okay. <laughs> I guess that helps. Yeah. Um, it seems all right. I think the 50 damage spread, though, is pretty good. Um, it could be interesting. In. It could be interesting as, like, a finisher for Lost Box decks, right? Because you... Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because Lost Box, right, you have the Sableye, but what if the Sableye can't reach all those? Because effectively, you could do 150 damage max with Iron yeah. Jugulus and with something like uh, the, the Mirage Gate. Um, you can power up three energies pretty easily, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, whether it's that or I'm not really sure if Lugia, if this makes sense in Lugia, because you're not... The goal with Lugia isn't to leave your opponent with low HP, but I don't know. There is, there's a world, though. I think spread decks have not seen, like, technically Lost Box in some ways is a spread deck, but it's not a, the same kind of spread that we've thought about. But um, I don't know, maybe this is good in, like, a Meowskarada deck, even, where you're spreading damage with uh, discarding grass energy. I don't know. It could be, but we'll have to wait and see. Next week, we're going to talk about the trainer cards and all the other news that's happened in the Pokemon trading card game. Sean, do you have any final words for our listeners no. this week? Enjoy, enjoy the pre-release this weekend um, for Paradox Rift. Mm -hmm. I got to see if my uh, I got to see if my game shops are doing it. I haven't heard anything about it. Weird. Yeah. Have you heard stuff about it? Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard what cards are the promos. That's kind of weird, but um, I have, you know, some of my game stores are they're posting that they're doing their pre-releases. So. Oh, interesting. Well, anyways, go talk to your local game shops. But that is going to be all for the podcast that revolves around the evolving meta. Thank you so much for listening. Sorry, it's been a rough couple weeks for us with, you know, moving across the country and now being in another country. Um, but next week we should be back in full swing and full shape thank you all right